In this video, I'm going to show you the best controller settings and options that no one talked about for the finals with DualSense and DualSense Edge, including how to become faster by reducing the input lag and how to eliminate recoil. Input lag is the time when you press a button until it takes action in the game. There are more than 5 options that affect input lag in the finals. We will also look into the controller settings in depth analysis, how to improve aim assist and the best settings for DualSense Edge. Unfortunately, there is no 120 FPS mode on PS5 and the finals is locked to 60 Hz. There are a few things that can help to reduce input lag, starting with the default input lag from DualSense and DualSense Edge. From the average of 20 tests with DualSense and DualSense Edge, the results on PS5 were unexpected. The DualSense has a delay of around 58.33 milliseconds on average, while DualSense Edge has a delay of around 63.49 milliseconds on average. There is one major difference between the DualSense Edge delay is mostly around 50 to 70 milliseconds, while DualSense delay range is from 33 up to 100 milliseconds. So there are more spikes on DualSense. You might be wondering about USB delay. And from my test, USB was faster by about 4 milliseconds on DualSense and 1 millisecond on Edge. If you remember my older videos, USB ports would affect the input lag in some games. Based on the recent test I made for this game, it doesn't matter which USB port you use at all. I recently started testing the aux port on the controller delay in the videos and in some games like COD it causes more delay on DualSense. I made the same test in the finals and using the aux port and the microphone from the controller port the DualSense average delay is measured at 46.66 milliseconds and for DualSense edge was measured at 56.83 milliseconds. Compared to the last test results both DualSense and DualSense edge are faster when using the aux port on the controller. If you think you've seen enough weird information mentioned today, I've got a ton more for you. If you like in-depth PS5 and controller tutorials, don't forget to subscribe. HDR versus SDR. This game doesn't support HDR natively, but what if we force HDR, meaning we use HDR always on in the console settings. For this test, I calibrated my PS5 HDR to 1000 nits. In HDR, DualSense delay was measured at 58.33 milliseconds and DualSense edge delay was measured at 51.48 milliseconds. Compared to SDR test results, DualSense was almost the same, but DualSense Sense edge has a lower delay. Keep in mind if your screen looks better on SDR or if it's slower on HDR, it isn't worth it. Let's talk about 4K versus 1440p. The console resolution won't affect the internal in game resolution most of the time unless the game is made to work like that. Still, I tested the input lag in 2160p versus 1440p for both controllers. DualSense 56.66 milliseconds on 4K and 58.33 milliseconds on 1440p. You can call it no difference. DualSense Edge 50.13 milliseconds on 4K and 63.49 on 1440p. This one was unexpected. So if your screen supports 4K, you may get a lower delay with Edge. Some monitors like the one I have can accept 4K and downscale it to 1440p. In this case, I do recommend it if they don't add delay to the picture. Next up, voice chat. In some games, voice chat affects the input lag. With the game voice chat on, the delay of DualSense was measured at 53.29 milliseconds and the delay of DualSense Edge was measured measured at 65.16 milliseconds. Now it's time to test VRR on versus off. DualSense input lag with VRR off is measured at 63.32 milliseconds and with VRR on at 58.33 milliseconds. DualSense edge input lag with VRR off is measured at 50.13 milliseconds and with VRR on at 63.49 milliseconds. Now we have one of the most important options field of view. Making this option higher will help you to see more areas around you. I tested this option in three kinds, the minimum value, the default value, and the maximum value. The difference between them isn't huge. For dual sense, the delay value is measured as below, min 61.1 milliseconds. Default 58.33 milliseconds, max 64.99 milliseconds. For DualSense Edge, mean 51.83 milliseconds. Default 63.49 milliseconds, max 58.49 milliseconds. As you see, the numbers are very close, and I suggest you use any field of view you like. What is my final recommendation on PS5? If you play with DualSense, use 4K resolution if your monitor or TV supports it natively. If you turn on the in game voice chat, you may get a lower input delay. Keep VRR on automatic 
take to lower the input lag. If you use the headset and microphone with the controller, there is a chance that you lower the input lag by 12 milliseconds on average. If you play with DualSense Edge, use 4K resolution if it's native on your screen. The in-game voice chat won't affect the delay. Turn off VR or on the console for lower input lag. Or if you don't care much and you want to avoid tearing, keep VR or on. The difference is only about 10 milliseconds. Use HDR always on if it looks fine on your screen. It can reduce the input lag up to 12 milliseconds. If you use a headset and microphone with dual sensage aux, it may lower the input lag by about 7 milliseconds. For field of view settings, use anything you like. You might be wondering about the HTCP input delay on PS5. Testing this option takes a lot of effort and it already took me 3 days to make it to this part of the video. If you like this video and you want me to cover it in the next one, let me know in the comments section. Currently, I keep it off when playing games and I turn it on when I want to use apps like Spotify or Netflix. In this chapter, I cover rapid fire settings, dead zone options, aiming, and response curve among the best settings for dual sensors to eliminate the recoil for most weapons. After this chapter, your aim becomes much better than before. Based on the raw input test, the L2 has no dead zone in this game, meaning as soon as the pressure value is on 1, it aims. So both dual sense and edge have the same performance. The same for R2. Weapons will start shooting at pressure value 1. There is one difference though. For non automatic weapons, if you use the zone 3, on edge, you're most likely to start shooting second and other rounds faster compared to full range on dual sense. However, the range on 0 to 1 or 0 to 100 will work the same way and you don't need to change it. And if you keep pushing the R2 a little on dual sense, you'll get the same results as zone 3 on edge. Now I want to talk about how to eliminate recoil with a little practice. Every weapon has a recoil pattern that follows all the time in the finals. For example, this is a recoil pattern for FCAR. It goes up and to the right. I want you to select the weapon you play with, for example I want to choose AKM, and aim at the wall at a typical distance. Shoot without changing your right stick and look at the pattern. For AKM, it goes up left and then up right. Now to eliminate this recoil and keep on target, you need to reverse the pattern. So instead of up left to right, my pattern will be down right to down left. Now when I want to shoot with AKM, if I push my right joystick from down right to down left, I must be able to eliminate the recoil. If you practice for a while, you'll understand how much time it takes and how much pressure you need depending on your zoom sensitivity settings. Now this is much more accurate than before. And if you keep practicing like this with each weapon for different distances, your muscle memory will remember that and you'll become much better at aiming. I'm new to this game too, so I'm practicing as well. But let me know if you have a different method for that. Even for pistols, it has a pattern, like R.357. The pattern is up left, so I remember to push the stick down right when shooting, to control the recoil. Now depending on the weapon you play with and the sensitivity settings, and being a short, mid, or long range player, I can recommend some settings for dual sense edge right stick. But currently, I don't have any information from you. That's why we have a full video of stick curve settings for dual sense edge on PS5, which I highly recommend you to check after this video. The link is in the pinned comment. In the controller section, we have look options that is for when you are not aiming. It's your camera speed. Zoom options are for when you are aiming. Holding L2, your ADS aim down sight sensitivity. I typically keep camera sensitivity much faster than aim in most games because you'll be able to rotate faster when not aiming. For this game, vertical felt a bit too fast when I had it close to horizontal sensitivity, so I'd prefer to keep that lower than horizontal. Zoom sensitivity at 100% will give you the same speed as the camera when aiming, but if you lower it, it becomes slower. For these values, 30 to 35% felt okay to me for now. I will refine it later. Focal length changes the camera sensitivity speed based on the video section and field of view. I'd recommend keeping this option on if you want to keep your settings reliable on any FOV. Now we have look boost. This game uses a dual zone curve system, meaning your analog stick has two zones. One is for the typical settings and the other part is called boost. For example, if I have my look sensitivity on 20 and boost on 500, the first zone will have the sensitivity of 20, of course with the response curve you choose, exponential or others, and the second zone will enter the boost speed. Now the question is where is that second zone? At which point does it exactly start? Based on my hardware raw data test, it is at 99% of the push, meaning for 98% of the push we have the first zone and at 99% the second zone of boost comes in. Now there is a problem with that which can't be fixed unfortunately. If there is any problem with your analog stick outer dead zone, for example my controller sometimes can't reach the max value, it can't reach 254 and it might be 253. In that case you get no boost or it becomes laggy. In most other shooter games like Call of Duty we have 
an outer dead zone option, but here we only have inner dead zone, which I'll talk about it soon. So if your controller has issues, you are out of luck. You can also enable vertical boost. Based on my last settings, I made this a bit faster, 400. So in case I'm trying to rotate faster, I have a second zone for that. Keep in mind this value will be added to the main value, meaning it will be 360 plus 400 equal to 760. For vertical, I prefer to keep it on 100. We have another option called look boost ramp up time. This option determines how long you should stay on the second zone until the boost speed is activated. It's based on second, 1 second, 0.9 or more. So if you have a sudden move to max stick movement, it won't boost the speed immediately. 1 second is fine to me. From 0.5 to 1.5 seems okay, but it slows you down as well. I use it on 0.8, but it depends on your play style. Test it and if you feel you are losing your camera too fast, try to increase the time. Now we have the same option for zoom, which is when you hold L2 known as ADS sensitivity. You know sometimes you try to keep on a target and because they are moving fast, you can't keep up. This could help in those cases, but it's very dependent on the weapon. I have it on 300 for horizontal and 110 for vertical. The ramp up time, I left it on 0.7 seconds. I wish we had outer dead zone options so I could fix that little dead zone, but even dual sense edge doesn't let you change outer dead zone. Pity. The inner dead zone is a part where your input will not be registered. If you have a stick drift meaning your character or your aim moves on its own when not touching the stick, these options can help. But there's a tip. Start from zero and slowly increase it until you don't have stick drift. As my controller is very good, it's fine on 4 or 5 for me. Then lower it by 2 values to have a little drift. In my case, 2 is the choice. Why would you add stick drift? Because that toggles aim assist. On this game, even for 1% input, the aim assist kicks in. So having a little stick drift on either of the sticks will give you early access to aim assist. Be careful to keep the invert vertical look input off. Otherwise, your controller works in reverse for up and down. We have two more important options. Look response curve is the curve for when you are not aiming and when you are in the first zone. We have exponential which is typically similar to this curve. Then we have linear which is linear and there is another option sinusoidal. I assume sinusoidal is like a reversed S curve. It starts faster and then slowly matches the exponential from 50% to max. I need more time to test and confirm this but I'd recommend exponential if you are going to use similar sensitivity settings as me and it's hard to control rig. Coil. But if you feel my settings are slow for you and they feel choppy, try linear curve and you'll probably become much happier. The look acceleration is an option that works similarly to aim smoothing in Overwatch 2 if you played that game. It takes your input with a delay. Imagine you are adding a time to when the game reads your input changes. Instead of checking the input change on the analog stick every 50 milliseconds, it takes 60 milliseconds or 70 or 100 milliseconds when you make it max. It can help to smooth the camera movement due to sudden movement. Movements, but if you want a direct input similar to the mouse and responsive camera movement, keep it on zero. If it's hard to control camera, try 10 or 20, but anything higher will have an effect on the response time readings. I should test the input delay of this option in another video. Now there is a disadvantage for people who use zoom look boost on a high value. If someone keeps moving in one direction, you either can't catch him or you may get so much boost and lose the aim. That's why I recommend to keep these values at max 1x to 2 2x of your main sensitivity and in case you are playing the game and getting shot try to keep moving in one direction left or right and it probably becomes much harder for enemies to shoot you if they don't know about the ramp up stuff the fact we have a strafe reticle only for movement in this game makes it easier to keep on target if you only move in one direction now if you have dual sense edge i have good news for you there is no option to move faster in this game but with dual sense edge you can change the left stick curve to digital plus five and you'll get a much faster movement for a little push it's like a keyboard movement and for the right stick if you have the left stick on digital plus 5 try precise minus 5 or minus 4 i use minus 5 and combined with the left stick fast movement and all the in-game settings i gave you it feels like cheating you can also try default which is linear it's much better and much more sticky and easier to follow the target with these settings for me on edge of course i'm talking about this weapon once you know how to control the recoil get the right settings in the game based on your pace and weapon and use the edge settings i gave you it may feel much better to use digital plus 5 and default on the left and right stick and for me they were game changer like day and night but keep in mind that sensitivity settings are personal and i will refine them in the future for the back buttons i'm using jump and a slide because i use them often 
In this chapter, we're gonna test a few things that have a direct effect on your gameplay. The first tip is about aiming and hip fire. No matter how accurate you are, if you don't aim, some of your bullets will be missed. For example, with this pistol in 15 meters, if I don't aim from each three or four shots, one or more shots will be missed. Have a look. It misses shots depending on the distance if you are not aiming. If I aim, all bullets will register, which is normal. So consider to aim even for under 15 meters distance. As you see, my crosshair may look weird. The other thing I found was the crosshair accuracy will be lost depending on the distance when you are not aiming and when the aim assist kicks in. So I decided to evaluate where it's almost accurate for all weapons under 30 meters of hip fire and ADS head snapping, which we'll talk about it soon. These are my settings and you can keep the green outline on zero or add other colors up to 200. We have aim assist options here. Target tracking will follow the target. If it is off, it will no longer follow the target. Sensitivity reduction will slow your sensitivity when you are on a target so it's easier to control your aim and it becomes faster once you are out of aim assist. Zoom snapping will snap the crosshair to target when you are aiming with L2. If you have a close look, it's like aimbot. I'm not even on the target's head but due to having zoom zoom snapping on, it will take my aim to his head. If you keep it off, it'll aim on where your crosshair is. This is wild. Keep it on or others will have a huge unfair advantage against you. I recommend keeping all options on, but after a while when you are better at aiming in this game and controlling recoil out of the aim assist on the wall or somewhere, I recommend you trying target tracking off. This will give you more freedom to control the recoil, but don't do it now. It may become harder to play. Only do it when you are able to control the recoil out of aim assist. Controller vibration is a personal choice. I'm okay to keep it on but I set the intensity to weak in PS5 settings. For the video section, I prefer to keep lens distortion and motion blur disabled. Lens distortion may look fine at the edges, but motion blur causes motion sickness for me. My preferred field of view on my 27 inch monitor is 90. Feel free to use what you like, but keep focal length sensitivity scaling on, so your settings will stay reliable. If you play with headphones, here are my audio settings. Using system default with 3D audio on PS5 will give you a much better direction of sound. And if you use Pulse 3D headset, here are my recommended EQ settings. I don't like night mode in this game for headphones, but we have a full video for audio settings on PS5 in 2024, which you can check from the links below. If you like to see a full video of settings and in-depth tests based on the characters and loadouts, let me know in the comments section. I'll catch you next time. Yeah.